In this video, we're going to look at input and output devices for computer science. Now, before I start anything, what I'm going to say is in this video, I'm not going to go explain every single input and output device you need to know for the exam because there's quite a lot. And I'll be honest with you, I'd be very, very bored of hearing my voice going on for that long talking about not the most interesting topic. So what I recommend you do is watch my video and then look at the two lists I'll give you and then go ahead and do your own research, understanding, just a basic understanding of how each of them work. You don't have to be able to create them yourself, you don't have to be able to uh, write an essay on it, you just need to understand how they basically work. Now I'm going to go through a couple of examples but I'm, like I said I'm not going to do the whole list because it would take forever. So some terminology first. So we've got peripherals. So a peripheral is an external device attached to the computer, such as your monitor, keyboard, mouse, anything on the outside that you can touch really. Now an input device is a device used to input data into the computer. An output device, which I've not put on the screen right now, is a device that allows you to receive information from the computer. And a pointing device is a type of device used to control a cursor on the screen. So I've spoken about in previous videos about the input process output model. So it's a concept that programs process an input and that input then gets changed or something happens to it with the CPU and then outputs it. So we take an input from a keyboard, mouse, scanner, webcam, and then get sent to the processor, which will either get, which will definitely get, sorry, put in main memory, such as RAM, but it also may get stored to a back-in store, such as a hard drive. And then once it's finished, it'll go to the output, which will be a monitor, printer, speaker, projector. So what you need to know, you need to know what a keyboard is, what mice is, 2D and 3D scanners, digital cameras, touch screens, interactive whiteboards, microphones, barcode scanners, and QR code readers. So let's talk about keyboards. So we all know what a keyboard is, or we should know what a keyboard is. It's a very familiar device that uses these different buttons to input text and numbers and instructions. Now most keyboards have a standard layout and keyboards can be found on many devices such as PCs, laptops and some phones and then also you'll obviously have an on-screen keyboard as well on your phone. Now the best thing about them is that they're very easy to use, widely available and cheap. A variation of a keyboard is a numeric keypad which is a device that primarily allows you to input numbers. So don't just focus on the numpad on a keyboard. When we talk about a numeric keypad, we're talking about that being the whole interface, like on an ATM or maybe something that you've got to type a code to, like a coded lock for a door or something. But ATM is probably the best example. So it's just got numbers and a few basic commands. We then got a concept keyboard, which is a keyboard which uses icons and phrases instead of an alphabet. So you can see here, Instead of having you type in the want a burger and chips or burger and fries, you can press the fries button, you can press the burger button for large, medium or small or whatever, and it speeds things up. And then we've got a mouse, which is an input device, which allows you to control a pointer on the screen. It's a pointing device. And without a mouse, you'd have to use your arrow keys to navigate your computer. Or I remember on an old, like in Windows XP, you could, if your mouse didn't work, you could set it so you can use the arrow keys, which was really, really slow. Or you'd have to use the command prompt and type in commands, which would take a long time and be a lot more difficult. Now, the output device you need to know are inkjet printers, laser printers, 3D printers, 2D and 3D cutters, speakers and headphones. LCD displays, LED displays, LCD projectors, and digital light projectors. So a laser printer is used to print in high volumes and each page is printed as a whole rather than line by line. They use dry powder ink rather than liquid ink called a toner. And this toner lasts a lot longer than ink, but the colours usually are not as vibrant. Now, you guys will not really understand what I'm talking about in a second, but you guys now have printers that can just print entire pages at once really, really quickly. If I print something right now, it's going to print it with a couple of seconds. The printer that I first had was a little bit like this. So it was noisy, it was slow. I remember my dad once 
printing. So my computer was on the landing and he was printing a, a Word document out. And not only did it take forever to print, but it was really noisy. And he started at about seven o'clock and he was still printing this one A4 page whilst I was trying to go to sleep. And I was only like maybe seven or eight, so I couldn't sleep. The dogs freaked me out a little bit. I didn't like it at first. So it wasn't the best device to use, but that's all we had at the time. We then got an inkjet printer, which is used to print low volumes of documents. So it does it line by line by putting ink on the page it squares it on. That's why sometimes if you use an inkjet printer and you pull it straight out whilst it's still warm and you put it in a pile, it might smudge. So inkjet printers have a print head which has nozzles which spray droplets of ink onto the paper to form your letters. It has ink cartridges, which you'll either have like a blue, yellow, magenta or a black one or you might have one that's got everything. Some systems can use up to six colours. Then you've got a motor and belt which moves the print head across the screen and then the paper feed which automatically feeds the printer with pages as they are required. Now I know that was only a quick one but just a brief understanding of the level of detail you need for each one of these. I'm not like I said going to go through all of them but you can see I've not gone into massive amounts of detail just enough to understand how they all work for the ones I've done. So that's what you need to go ahead and research for your exam. Don't forget to comment if there's anything you want to ask me any questions about or if you want to um, request a specific topic but don't forget to subscribe, like and add notifications so you can see my videos as they come out. I'll see you in the next one.